Hello. Um, on YouTube, a couple of people asked me how did I attach my sleeves to my chainmail shirt that I made, and um, so I thought I'd just make a little bit of a quick tutorial on how to a attach the sleeves. Well, basically, when you attach the sleeves, you, you're going to be attaching chainmail that is running in two different directions. So it's not ver it's not as straightforward as attaching chain that's going in the same direction. So I just made up two little pieces to represent um, represent the body of the shirt, like the torso bit and the sleeve. This bit represents the torso, and just imagine that your head would be here, and this bit is running across the top of your shoulder, going from your chest to your back or your back to your chest, whatever and this bit is part of the sleeve which is going to be going down your arm or yeah down your arm as long as you want and oh yeah just a bit of a warning the batteries in this camera might run out at any moment so if it just suddenly cuts out that's why anyway back to the tutorial so in um, a normal chain when it's in a normal piece of chain mode when the chain's running in the same direction as you can see, the um, the links sort of all lined up one way. They're on top of each other, that way, then that way, then that way. They're all on top of each other. But when you're attaching two different directions, I don't know how you can see this, but um, basically what you do is these two, like the first and third row of rings, they're both running towards the camera this way they're both on top of each other that way so what you want to do is get the first and second rings of this of the opposite direction chain this is hard to explain okay but just bear with me if these up here are supposed to be on top of the ones below then you get the first and second rings from this row this piece and they go underneath the top I don't know how well you can see that but the first and third go on top of the first and second <laughs> basically so you see that there's a gap well you probably won't see it on the camera but if you do it yourself and you have a look there's a gap there and there and that's where the connecting ring should go so I'll just connect it for you put a ring in It's a bit fiddly, but once you get get a rhythm, it's all good. There we go. So that's the first one. Now, all these connecting rings aren't going to be in any particular pattern. They won't match up with either of the two pieces. They'll just be a row of odd rings. But when you're wearing it, it they don't show up. It looks like it's joined seamlessly. Okay, so that's the first one. And so next, the next one is basically the same but you're putting the next connecting ring through this is really hard to explain but you, you just line up the two pieces like they should go and you'll see that there's some gaps there's some gaps where the top rings meet with the bottom rings and that's where the connecting rings go I mean this probably doesn't make any sense but I'll just put it together and maybe it'll make a bit more sense. So this is quite fiddly. You might need tweezers if you're a bit uncoordinated or it doesn't make much. Okay, I'll just stop the video for a moment while I connect a few more rings and then I'll just show you what it looks like afterwards, okay? Okay, I put one more connecting ring in and I'll just show you how it makes it easier. When Okay, first of all, when you do the first connecting ring, you put it right at this end and then it might be a bit too hard to put the next ring in directly next to it so you put what would be the third connecting ring in so it'd be like one to the third one over here you put that in and then that'll draw the two pieces of chain to get two sheets of chain mail together and make it easier to fit the second connecting ring in well the second in the line it would be the third one that you're putting in okay so I just need to find where the rings would go, the connecting rings going to go. So 
you can't see it on the camera, but when you do it for yourself, you'll see that there's two gaps there where the rings have to go, where the ring has to go to connect the two pieces. Um, by the way, this is for four-in-one chainmail. I mean, I don't know how well this would work if you did six-in-one or eight-in-one or whatever. All right, sorry about that, but um, the camera just ran out of space. I wasn't watching the memory card space, so that's what happened. Hang on, just put my light back on. All right. So now there's three connecting rings in there. In the um, yeah, connecting the two pieces. Um, there's one, two, three. Those three. I don't know if you can see them. I should have used different coloured rings, shouldn't I? Oh well. Um, anyway, the next one is pretty straightforward. I don't think this this arm piece is going to be long enough to connect all the way along this the torso piece. But the next thing, well. If you've gotten this far, you'll probably probably um, understand the rest because every time you put the top and the bottom pieces together after there's one or two ring links joined. Okay, I'll start again. Every, every time you say if it's like this, if it's just a part, you've just put it down after putting the connecting ring in. Every time you straighten it out and put the two pieces together, there'll be two gaps just like when you're making four in one there'll be two gaps where the ring goes the connecting ring should go down through one gap and up through the up through the other gap next to it on the left and that's where you put the ring in so if you've done the first two connecting rings or the first three you should be able to see where the next one's going to go and I'll just this is going to be the last one because there's not enough not enough chain to go across this whole length but I just put the last one in just to show you what it looks like when it's done now there's a gap here the rings going down and up again and yeah you probably won't be able to see that but that's where it goes and that's it that's two different directions joined together and um if you look at it closely you can see that some if somebody looked at it closely they'd be able to see that the connecting rings don't match up with either of the two pieces but when you're wearing it or if it's at a couple of feet or even a couple of meters you won't notice it and um, oh yeah, just another thing if you do it this way and when you get uh, start on top okay start on the top of the shoulder and so that when you get to the under the underarms or the armpits um, you have to add more rings in or something otherwise it gets too tight under your arm and yeah might have to add some random ring rings in wherever you think they should go and um, when you wear it the arm piece because this this piece the arm piece on here is a lot narrower than the torso piece where where the two pieces join up the arm piece will be stretched so all the rings will be wide open instead of nice and close close together so this is something I didn't do but you might want to if you know how to is add a row of expanding pattern maybe a couple of rows of expanding pattern to expand it so that the arm piece will fit nicely on the torso and that would be a good idea also for the underarm now just before I finish up I'm just going to say that this is how I did it I, I have no idea if this is the right way but this is how I did it I guessed the first time, to be honest, I, re I guessed, a complete, complete guess, and um, when I finished it worked out okay. So when somebody asks me how did I do it, I'm just showing them this is how I did it. It might not be the right way, but it works.